Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is a review, a very quick review of uh, the Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition, first released in 2011 and it's uh, recently got like an expansion for this one so I'm um, going to have a little look at this one and then in a separate video we're going to have a look at the, the new uh, Mother of Dragons expansion and see what's changed, whether it makes a game better, worse or maybe it doesn't do nothing so yeah, let's come back after this. Board games 4K. So Game of Thrones, a board game, second edition. I mean, this is a, it's a bit of an old classic now, isn't it? You know, so, but first, like we said, first released in 2011, and it's, uh, and it's got that, that reputation for being like a bit of a bit of an epic game really i mean it's just like a six player game and it, it really works best with with six i mean if you've got less than six players and you, you're playing it with um some of the areas and in, in the on the board uh, and that's a blessing and a curse so uh, everybody in this game takes control of a, a house or a faction that's in the in the books it's not based on the tv series because when this was first released I think the first it was 2003 I think when this was first released the TV series wasn't weren't out so it's based on the characters and the stories in the book I guess and uh, yeah so you take control of one of the six houses and even I mean this game's got a bit of a reputation of being a bit of a complex beast but because the rule book's so poor I mean it's this big massive beast of a, of a rule book once you peel off all, all the gump and you get down to the core rules you can you can have like a cheat sheet of what one sheet so what, what, what you got you got the the game rounds is is divided into three phases you've got the westeros phase where you've got three decks of cards and you reveal one the top card of each deck and resolve them and that will allow you to sort of muster new troops on the board it will allow you to uh, realign your supply lines and it will also uh, affect the chances of a wild and an invasion from the north right and then you've got the planning phase so you've got the, everyone's got these command tokens and you put them face down on regions where you've got plastic units where you've got your armies and then everyone reveals them and then you resolve the command tokens there's various command tokens you've got the raid order which allows you to after all the tokens have been revealed you can remove some tokens from adjacent areas you've got the march order which allows you to move your units into adjacent areas and attack but you, you can move more than one unit but you can only have, ever have one battle and then you've got the defense orders which shore up which shore up the regions where you've got your your token and then you've got the um, then you've got the support orders which allow you to gift the strength of your army where the support order token is to either your army or somebody else's army in an adjacent region and that's where the game kind of shines really because you may be asking for somebody's support thinking like could you put a support order in I don't know, Winterfell or something to protect me from another another player and they put the token down when they flip it over it's like a consolidate power type yeah so consolidate power when you flip that over that allows you to gain power tokens which is sort of like a currency in a game and that allows you to bid on one of the three tracks you've got the iron throne track which is you take the iron throne you break ties and then you've got the uh, fiefdom track which gives you the valerian steel blade which gives you plus one in combat then you've got the king's court track, which gives gives you the messenger raven and if you've got if you're in possession of that then you can change one of your command tokens after they've all been revealed or you can look at the top card of the wildland deck and stick it underneath if you want to so it gives you a little sort of a bit of a heads up on what's coming on the wildland track so i mean combat in this game is it's relatively simple a little bit mathy but it's not that bad so what you, first thing when you move one of your tokens into the into an opposing player's region with one of their armies the game sort of temporarily stops and you call for support so like we said you look at all the support tokens that are adjacent you you take their strength and um, yeah, each each unit's got a different strength. So you've got footmen, which is worth one. Knights are worth two in combat, and siege engines are worth four, but they can only attack in areas where there's castles. They're not useful for defense. So you take all the support tokens, the strength of your army, and then you choose one of your cards from your the deck of house cards, and you you add the the strength for that to the to the army and if you got it you can flip the valerian steel blade to give you plus one so you add up all your combat strength and the player who has the highest combat strength is victorious 
and depending on how many swords are on the combat card that you played that's how many troops are destroyed and any other remaining troops have to re retreat into a friendly region or an empty region if they can't they're destroyed right so yeah i mean there's a few convoluted rules around ports and what you can do and if, you, if you're going to play this it's a good idea just to get that into your head and get everyone get the port thing into, into everyone's head because it's a bit of a pain in the neck but um essentially you win the game if you control uh, seven strongholds or castles yeah and um nobody controls seven then you play 10 rounds and whoever controls the most is the winner after 10 rounds and that's essentially the game really so what do we like about this one so one of the things that really draws us to this game the fact that it's been a sort of a, it's been in our collection for quite a number of years and it's still being supported after all this time is because it's a six player epic you've got that you've got that um, twilight imperium epic feel to this one and the fact that it's 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 basically only playable in its vanilla form with six players is both a blessing and a curse because obviously you need six players to play it but then when are you going to get six players to play this game i mean you know you, you, if you've got if you've got twilight imperium then you're going to want to play that as well so it, it limits the amount of time that this is going to get to the table right yeah i mean another thing that is pretty good in this is the sense of negotiation you know you've got that if you do this for me i'll do that for you and then that that alliance can shift so and nothing in this game is ever concrete which is which is really 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 juicy prospect when you play this one because you don't know whether your mate in winterfell is going to go over and do over the baratheons or whatever or vice versa so there's that this negotiation is very simple and it's it's not it feels kind of neutered in a, in a sense but that, that i think that fits the fits the game is it's, it's not a, a, a massive massive part of a part of the game another plus is once you actually get around the rule book and you you've got the rules into your mind it's actually quite a simple game you're just putting tokens on the board flipping them over and resolving them and that is it and once you once you, i mean so i say once you get the, the idea of ports into your head the game is actually a very very simple game it's just it makes it look because the game's so it's so broad and big it makes it look bigger than, than the sum of its parts i think but yeah it's it's a very simple game and there's there's not that much a, is it ap people call it well there's not much of this analysis paralysis because by the time your turn comes around i think you've already decided what you what you're going to do you've already put your your counters down you know you should have formulated a plan so it, the fact that your turns come around quite slowly gives you that opportunity to plan what you're going to do and it also limits the amount of time that people spend just fixated on the board so that's a, that's a big plus for a game like this yeah i mean combat is it's really quite simple isn't it? you just basically adding up all the combat strength you choosing a card dumping it down and um yeah that's it i mean it's, it's just whoever's got the the highest score and it's uh that's that's what you want in a game like this you know you want to just bang 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 done combat's done and it's over with so there's none of this it's not protracted it's not it's not a, a complicated process it's i say it's a bit a little bit mathy but it's just add, adding up numbers so that's a big big plus about this game you can plan for combat and it's over pretty quickly i know the game pauses but it's, it's kind of brief once you once you get into the swing of the, of the way combat works it's very very brief so what don't we like about game of thrones a board game so one of the things that uh, i find quite makes a game it doesn't bump it up to, to really high is, is the fact there's no progression so there's no real sense that you're building your, your armies up and you, you you're gaining special abilities you know you've got your cards off the bat that you can choose from and uh, okay you can upgrade your army units but you can do that whenever you want really so uh, there's no real you can't bolt on you know, more weapons you can't have an enhanced version of a siege engine or you know it, it, there's no sense of progression in the game and that is a that's a bit of a disappointment really i mean one of the other things is like we've already said the game is it's probably too long for what it is you know it, it, i mean some people say they play this for five hours i mean there's no chance we'd do that so but you know if you if you play with the right people that know the game and can keep the game moving and cut down on the amount of board staring yeah you can do this in about three hours which is probably about right and it's uh yeah you know it's probably a bit too long really i think you know yeah also the game's quite fiddly i mean you've got to because the board's so big you've got to reach over and you're gonna the, the regions get very very um packed very quickly so you, and the fact you've got to flip these tokens over you 
you know if you lose one they could fly off the board or you could fly somewhere else and you know, you're constantly sort of trying to flip things and it's, you know my big fat fingers it's, it's hard to sort of like putting your hand in a bowl of stew and it's, it's quite a fiddly game and that's that's a bit of a pain in the neck you know yeah one of the biggest pains in this game are the port rules they are horrible one thing you want to do is get the port rules into your head i mean if anything really they could be taken out that's one of the ways you could streamline the game so yeah so one of the other things that we don't like about it is that you it's, it's it's playable with less than six players but it's also unplayable with less than six players because you've got all those empty areas i can't imagine playing this with three or four players maybe you could get away with five but really you need to play it with six and that's one of the downers is that you can't really get it to the table that often because when you're playing with six players you probably want to play something else really like Twilight Imperium or you know for this for the length of the game because if, if you've got six players you know you're gonna you're gonna have people maybe drop in drop out I don't know but it's, it's just a pain in the neck really having six players uh, less than six players in this no no don't do it yeah so Another thing that stops us from getting to the table is that players must learn the rules beforehand. You can't, you can't, you can do it. Like, well, of course you can do it, but you, I would advise everybody to watch the Fantasy Flight official rules video multiple times. Get that, get the port rules into your head, and then do a bit of research, and then come to the table knowing the rule book and prepare some handouts for for people. You know, you want a cheat sheet so you could, you've got the rule, all the rules in front of me, you can condense it down to one page. But yeah, that's a, that's another thing is that the rule book sucks. It really does. It's awful. It's, it's too big. It's too much fluff, and it's laid out really badly. And um, yeah, so yeah, definitely learn the rules before you play. So in summary, a game of Thrones, a board game. It is a frustratingly epic board game. It's, uh, it, I mean, we're not going to get rid of it because uh, the expansions come out but it doesn't get to the table that much and that's probably a good thing because i wouldn't want to play this all the time it's not that sort of game it's, it's one of them games where you've got to devote a, i would devote a an extended evening or maybe even a full day to this one if you can have play with six players or eight with expansion oh my god oh my god it's one of them epic games that you need to set aside so look we're going to play this Everybody go away, read the rules, get the rule, get fluent with the rules, learn a new language, learn Sanskrit or something, because that's what it feels like when you're, when you're trying to learn this one. Come to the table, we'll go, off you go. And um, yeah, but yeah, it's got that massive, it's got that epic experience, there's lots of backstabbing, there's uh, shifting alliances, it's tense, it's exciting, it's it's a big, big, big game. It's like, it's like um, how can I describe it? It's like uh, the Ten Commandments or one of them Charlton Heston movies, you know. It's a big hitter. It really is. It's uh, it's really, really fitting of the books. And, and it does mirror that, that cutthroat nature of the books. You know, all these characters, you don't know when they're going to get knocked off, yeah. So it's the same thing. You don't know when someone's going to turn around and stab you in the back. So that's, that's one of the good things about it, yeah. So it's, ep it's big, it's epic, it's exciting, it's tense. Negotiation is really good. But but that's also its flaws as well because it's not going to get to the table it's uh, when you're learning it it's it's uh, migraine inducing it's it's boring to learn it's a struggle it's my washing machine but um yeah game of thrones the board game i would recommend this one it's definitely worth it you know and the fact that it's still being supported and there's an expansion which we're going to talk about next which may or may not make the game better then I would recommend this one. Definitely go and get it because it's not that expensive. We paid about 30 quid for it, 35 quid for it. So yeah, if you like those six player big epic games, then this one should definitely be on your radar. Mm -hmm.